All right, this is part two of our review of polynomials. In this video, we will focus on factoring polynomials in the uh, some of the different types of factoring that we have learned about. All right, with number three here, we're starting with the sum of two cubes. Uh, now, I know this is the sum of two cubes because I'm familiar with uh, some of the cubes. Um, what I'm talking about is if we said uh, one to the third power, of course that's one, that makes one a, a perfect cube. Uh, two to the third power is eight. All right, three to the third power is 27. Uh, four to the third power is 64. Five to the third power is 125, and so on. Um, because I'm familiar with these, when I see the 64 and the 27, my brain goes, ah, 64, that's a perfect cube. Ah, 27, that's a perfect cube. So it pays to be familiar with the first, uh, you know, 10 perfect cubes or, or so. Um, okay. Now, we have learned that anytime you factor the sum or difference of two cubes, it's always going to factor as a binomial and then a trinomial. Okay, so I'm setting up for a binomial and a trinomial, two terms and three terms. The binomial is just uh, the cube root of each one of these terms. Okay, it will give you each term of the binomial. In other words, 64, the cube root of 64. Well, looking at my little chart here, where does the 64 come from? It comes from cubing 4. So 4 is the cube root of 64. Um, and of course, x is simply the cube root of x to the third power. Now, where does the 27 come from? 3, cubing 3. So 3 is the cube root of 27. Now, if for some reason you need a calculator for this, and, and I can't quite imagine why you would, but I feel like I should mention, if you want to do the cube root of 64 on your calculator, you do it like this. Um, you type in 3, and then the cube root. See this x root? So I hit second, caret. Now I can do the cube root of whatever I want. So sure enough, cube root of 64 uh, is 4. Similarly, the cube root of 27 is 3. So you should know how to do this on a calculator. Well, uh, not just any calculator. The TI-30 XS Multiview. If you don't own one, fix it. Um, but you, sh you should know those by heart. Now, um, the binomial, I I'm sorry, the trinomial. The trinomial is going to have three terms. That's why they call it a trinomial. Um, but I think of it as a beginning and an end, because they sort of go together. And then there will be this middle term. All right, I always do the beginning and end first, um, because here's how you, how you get the beginning and end. Um, the first term and the last term come from squaring the two terms of your binomial. So if I take 4x and I square it, I'm going to get the first term of the trinomial. 4x squared is uh, 16x squared. Okay, 4x times 4x is 16x squared. Now if I take this 3 and cube it, that will give me the third term. So that will be a positive 9, and please put plus 9. Okay, that will always be positive. Even if this is a negative, you square it, it turns positive. Now the middle term, well, let me put a little note here. So you square these. Okay, the middle term is a product. Okay, meaning multiplication. I'm still using the two terms of my binomial, but this time I'm multiplying. So 4x times 3 is going to be 12x. So I'll have my 12x. However, it's going to be the opposite of this product. All right, so if this is positive, then this is going to be negative. And that's it. That's how you, that's how you do it. Um, some students benefit from the following little acronym to help you remember the three signs that so show up in these problems. And uh, they say, well, we, we all need to use SOAP. And uh, so SOAP, S-O, and then 
SAP. And that stands for same, opposite, always positive. Because compared with the original problem, this first sign is always the same, and this second sign is always opposite, <clears throat> and the third sign is always positive, no matter what. So use soap if it makes you feel better. All right, so that's how you factor the sum or difference of, of two cubes. Okay, so let's move on to number four. When I see four terms here, I'm thinking grouping. This is probably going to factor by grouping. And the way grouping works is you can, uh, you know, first, it, the order matters, but um, let's try it the way it is first. Let's try grouping the first two terms and the second two terms. All right, usually putting it in standard form uh, will help you out. Now, if I treat these two terms like their own problem and pull out the greatest common factor, the GCF. So the GCF here is 16x squared. So I'm going to pull out that 16x squared. OK. Now, if I pull that outside of parentheses, then what's that going to leave? Well, that's just going to leave x plus 2. OK? And it, really, I'm, just, I'm dividing by, by 16x squared. 32 divided by 16 is 2x squared cancel out. Same type of a deal over here. The 16s cancel out. x squared cancels out with uh, two of these x's and leaves one x. That's what I'm doing. Okay, now um, be careful here because this is negative. I want you to treat this like a negative one that um, needs to be brought out out front of parentheses. So I'm going to take this negative one that I sort of drew in and uh, treat that as the common factor that needs to come out. So if I do that, so dividing each one of these things by negative one, I'm going to get x plus 2. Okay, imagine doing the distributive property. If I did negative 1 times x, I'd get negative x. If I did negative 1 times 2, I'd get negative 2. All right, now for the grouping method, we re rely on this coincidence. See how it was x plus 2 twice. Um, if that didn't happen, we would be stuck. But luckily it did. All right, so this x plus 2 is now itself a common factor. So just like we pulled out the common factor of 16x squared, now we need to take out this common factor of x plus 2. And I like to put it out front because that's what we normally do with a GCF. Okay, so if I strip away this common factor and sort of combine them as one, undistribute the x plus 2, that's going to leave behind the blue part. So that's going to leave behind 16x squared minus 1. All right? Now, many students will make a mistake and stop here, leaving this as their final answer. Um, but it's important to recognize that sometimes um, you will get something in one of these factors that can factor more. So we look at this quadratic factor over here. And um, there's a way to factor this blue factor more. Do you see it? Well, um, this is the difference of two squares. So um, this linear factor, x plus 2, um, can't do anything with that. However, the quadratic factor, this is the difference of two squares. So we can use the pattern that we have hopefully memorized. And 16x uh, squared minus 1, that will factor as uh, 4x plus 1 times 4x minus 1. Now, some students will go, oh, I can factor this third one even further because this is the difference of two squares as well because 4 is a perfect square and so is 1. But uh, not so fast because x is not a perfect square, all right? Um, we could factor the previous one because it was x squared. 
and that can factor as x times x. But once you just have a, a linear term, um, there's nothing you can do with that in terms of factoring. So this is, in fact, the final answer. OK, and that's how you factor by grouping. All right. Now, um, number five makes some students nervous because um, of the high power that you see right here. All right, x to the fourth power. Um, but you needn't worry because this is really just the difference of two squares, just like we looked at in problem number four. All right, um, so just factor it as the difference of two squares and uh, go as far as you need to go. So let's uh, start off by our basic difference of two squares. So of course, x to the fourth power, we'll split that evenly, and we'll split that as x squared times x squared makes x to the fourth power. All right, and 81 is a perfect square. So this will factor as x squared plus 9 and x squared minus 9. All right, that's a difference of two squares pattern. Now. Um, one of these can factor further, and one of them cannot factor any further. This first one cannot factor further because um, it is the sum of two squares, not the difference of two squares. Um, the sum of two squares is unfactorable. So let me colorize this to make it clear. Um, so this first factor is unfactorable, so I'm just going to bring it down. So I've got x squared plus 9, I just bring it down unchanged. Now this uh, blue factor here is the difference of two squares. So I can factor it further using the difference of two squares pattern that we just memorized. Um, we'll do x plus 3, x minus 3. And so this would be completely factored. Okay, so not too bad. That's pretty easy as factoring problems go. Okay, and finally, for this video anyway, we'll factor this number six. Now really, the first step of all factoring problems, and I, I should have mentioned this on each problem, is always to look for the greatest common factor. Now just glancing back over the last three problems that we've done, why is it doing that? Hold on. Okay, um, looking back over these problems, is there a common factor? No, there was no common factor um, for problem number three. Um, looking at number five, there's no common factor there. Looking back at number four, all right, I mean, this didn't have a number other than one. So there's no common factor here. But you should always look and see, is there a common factor that you can pull out? But this is the first one that has a common factor. So let's pull that out and see what we have after that. So the common factor um, will be 2x. All right, so both of these are divisible by 2. And both terms have at least 1x. Now, once you determine the common factor, um, if, if you want to decide what's going to go in the uh, parentheses here, you can think of it as dividing. Okay, it's dividing by the GCF. So if I take this and I divide both of them by 2x, uh, if you need that to help you, that will help you understand what to put inside the parentheses. Uh, these twos will cancel. This x will cancel out one of these x's and leave x squared. 72 divided by 2 is 36. And these x's cancel out. So I'll just have x squared plus 36. Now, you should always look at this, especially when it's quadratic, and ask yourself, uh, can we factor this further? I see this is squared and this is squared. So is this the sum of two squares? Um, yeah, but the sum of two squares is not factorable. So um, if this were minus 36, then I'd go x plus 6, x minus 6. All right, that's what I would do if I had x squared minus 36. But that's not what we have. 
All right, x squared plus 36 is not factorable. So that means this is the final answer. All right, and um, that's it for this video on factoring. Um, in the next video, we will pick up our review on working with polynomials, and the next video will be about division. So we'll do long division, and let's see, do we have a synthetic division after that? And uh, synthetic division. Okay, so that'll, we'll, the next video will be about division of polynomials. See you on the next video.